sure all you guys have seen the video, the very unfortunate video of the Piper Cheyenne down in South America. It takes off, it looks like it starts to bank, and then it kind of rolls over on its back, um, or it's starting to roll over on its back before it crashes. I've looked at a whole bunch of um, called Reddit threads, and I've seen a whole bunch of YouTube videos where people said, oh, it's a classic VMC roll. Uh, listen, I'm wrong, like, all of the time. Just ask my wife, and I'm probably wrong about this. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. But I just kind of want to put it out there because it's something to think about for those that maybe fly multi-engine airplane or are just curious about what happened. To me, it looks like the airplane just took off a little bit too aggressively, a little bit too early. Now, they had the benefit of ground effects, so they, you know, they take off probably a little bit before they should. And then they bank the airplane, and then almost immediately it, it goes into that, that steep bank and crashes. Now, what a VMC rollover is... All right, on a multi-engine airplane here, the number two engine is feathered. You can see the propeller is not moving. The only way to counteract all that asymmetrical thrust in the yaw is with the rudder. Now, the problem is when you run out of rudder because there's not enough airflow, the airplane goes over on its back like this. That's a VMC roll. And kind of here's what it would look like from the uh, cockpit. So this would be a, per a perfect example if they took off, rotated, and the engine, you know, the number one engine quit and they didn't have enough airflow going over the rudder, and it rolled over in a crash. But in this case, this, this particular case, it looks like they just took off, started to bank, just stalled the airplane. Now, what may have kind of helped aggravate the situation is once they get out of ground effect, they're obviously going to lose that, the benefit of ground effect. And then I, whether or not they did, it's hard to tell. It looks like before they hit the ground, they had you know full right rudder in there. But initially, if you're going to do like an aggressive maneuver, I know I've done it before, you're going to bank the airplane, you're going to lead possibly with the rudder. And if you have a little bit too much rudder, it's going to be a skidding turn. And much like all those cases you've seen of people that overshoot final, that base, base to final turn where they overshoot it, and that they kick that, that bottom rudder and the airplane ends up stalling and it kind of goes into like a snap roll and crashes. All right, guys, I want to make it very clear. I am not saying this is what happened in the, the case of the Cheyenne here, but I'm just saying it's a possibility. And here's the example that I was talking about. You read a lot of reports about that. You overshoot final, a little bit too much rudder, skidding turn, you're pulling back on the, on the, on the elevator, and then the airplane stalls uh, much like this. Again, just a possibility. So you have that combination of high angle of attack, low airspeed, low energy, the airplane is banked, and then you have a skidding turn. The outer wing producing more lift, you have the lower wing decelerating because you're in a skidding turn. And the airplane possibly, to me, just looks like they exceeded the critical angle of attack and the airplane unfortunately just stalled. Now, it could have been an engine failure. Um, you know, I, I don't know how long it's going to take for the report to come out, but uh, based on what I've seen, it didn't look like an engine failure. Again, it's very hard to tell from just the, the pretty grainy video that I'm, you've seen on Twitter. And it's also very hard to tell if it was not a VMC rollover. I'm just kind of putting it out there, something to think about. Uh, I don't want people to assume that it was just a, a VMC rollover because you can very, very easily stall an airplane like that, even if it's a multi-engine airplane like that, just by being a little too aggressive on the controls or abruptly pulling the airplane off the runway before it's ready. Now, you think multi-engine airplanes, oh, they have two engines, they have a ton of power. Not really. Uh, you lose, you know, if you lose an engine on a twin-engine airplane, you're losing 50% of the power, but you're losing 80-something percent of the performance. And even multi-engine airplanes, like a Baron, uh, a Cheyenne, I mean, all these airplanes, they cruise pretty fast, they climb high, they go far, but it's not exactly like they're a, um, you know, an extra 300 taking off with just a ton of excess power. That's not really the case. So you rotate, you let the airplane build up speed, get a positive rate gear up and be on your way. I mean, obviously it depends on their, the length of the runway, if there's obstacles, but there's no need to aggressively get the a twin engine airplane off the runway uh, and put yourself in a bad position if you do lose an engine. It's kind of maybe something to think about. It's, it's an alternative to the, to the classic VMC rollover, which I keep seeing um, repeated online. It very well may have been that, but it may have not been that. So I think it's kind of worth, worth the discussion. So, um, and I'll talk about doing, you know, what we call a VMC demo for your multi-engine training. Get the airplane up at altitude and you bring the throttle back. You bring the prop, you feather the prop, cut the mixture and you're climbing out and you, you basically slow the airplane down, you do it in a climb, and then what's going to happen is eventually you're going to lose the airflow over the rudder. And when you lose the airflow over the rudder, the asymmetrical thrust, the operating engine, is going to overpower the rudder, and it's going to roll over. So as soon as you have that full full rudder in there and you can no longer control it, that's when the, 
the demo's done, you push forward, you start the engine again, and you're on your way. You would never let it get to the point of actually stalling or going into an actual VMC rollover because the airplane goes into a spin, and at that point, you're a test pilot, and it's usually um, unrecoverable. So I remember doing it. I got my multi-engine in a twin Comanche, and then I flew a lot in a Seneca and a Duchess, um, a l very, very little bit of time in a Cheyenne. But it's the same thing, you know, all these airplanes are great when both engines are operating, but they are, they are pigs with one engine um, not operating. Uh, so just wanted to briefly touch on that, kind of offer an alternative theory. I'm curious what you guys think. And I know right before they hit the ground, it does look like they have full right rudder in there, but that also could have been a product of, hey, you know, they're at a 60 degree bank angle, last ditch effort to just really, you know, go full right rudder. Or it may have been counteracting uh, the number two engine fail, excuse me, the number one engine failure and counteracting that asymmetrical thrust. It's, it's hard to say. I have to wait for the report to come out, but I just wanted to put it out there uh, and curious what your guys' thoughts were. All right, thanks.